Good evening, everyone. Daniel Miller here. How are you all guys doing? Hope you're well. Hope you had a very, very good and relaxing Saturday. We are going to be resuming with our anthem broadcast yet again for the second night running. As you know, there have been many, many problems yesterday on the technical front, and no one's really fully responsible for that. There were lots and lots of complaints online, particularly on Twitter, coming from everyone who purchased the game and uh, you know pre-ordered. Basically, lots of those people had pre-ordered the top tier edition called the Legion of Dawn. And literally nothing worked within the first 16 hours or so. People had lots of difficulties, first of all, with loading the demo. Then secondly, there were problems with the use of the codes. And then thirdly, when it came to the actual gameplay, initially it seemed to work. But then what we faced was, first of all, uh, an infinite loading period where you would access certain section, particularly if you were embarking on a mission, and then the section wouldn't load and the game wouldn't bring you back to the game screen, which meant for all of us Twitch streamers, a lot of difficulty. We had to be simply restarting both the broadcast and the game, and that indeed was rather tedious for the viewers. Talking of the game, uh, certainly Anthem, in my sort of first gameplay experience, was closer to Mass Effect than to Destiny. And I think this was obviously well expected, considering that Anthem is obviously the child of Bioware. And there seems to be a lot of RPG content, literally from the word go. A lot of that content is not accessible during the demo phase, but indeed we'd be able to access it once the game was out at the end of February. So really a lot to look forward to. And also on the other hand, I really absolutely adored the graphics and the visual side of Anthem particularly in the base, you know, it had a bit of a, um, Assassin's Creed origin, sort of Middle Eastern type of aura, but the attention given to detail, to every single character who is passing us by, to every single item which is on display other than stores or anywhere in the arena has been second to none, and anyone who likes really games that are visually beautiful with a lot of uh, time spent in detail, Anthem is definitely going to be your favourite. There is obviously no question about that. And then secondly, I quite like the idea of very easy control over my character. The character could be either walking, running or flying. And the controls on PlayStation worked really, really well. Obviously, we suffered a lot of lag during the actual gameplay. And instead of doing the mission, which was obviously prescribed, I went around and I explored the area and I went to all kinds of hidden secret corners everywhere. And the trouble there was that there were some spots where, first of all, you get stuck and then secondly, you face the enemy and neither the enemy nor you can die. You were hitting them with everything you've had and basically they were receiving no damage and equally I was not able to get killed. So this was really bizarre because you, you really get into this fierce firefight which is slightly laggy and you know until the end of our days. So that was obviously a technical problem and I'm quite certain that the developer is dealing with this and working on those sections. I am absolutely no doubt that those are to be resolved by the 22nd of February when the game comes out. But coming back to the gameplay, I really like the character, the ease of use, also the controls are very easy to learn. There weren't any specifically arduous commands which you would have to deploy. The use of weaponry on Javelin Suit was easy and you could target the enemies literally at will. Enemies were well designed and coming at you in large numbers. You had to be fairly meticulous in your targeting, you had to be moving quite a lot. Uh, you couldn't be simply you know hitting them from a remote spot and the world which i faced out there was vast and there were lots and lots of different corners which we could explore so quite frankly it is going to be much greater in terms of its universe than mass effect because there are areas which you can be literally exploring and then discovering certain items you can be picking them up harvesting i guess i guess we'd be able to control some items either in terms of anything which is consumable or some weapons we'll have to see and so on the gameplay front in terms of how it came across I was very very happy however 
I had grave concerns about the quantity of technical deficiency. I've never seen ever in over 25 years of gaming any game online which would have so much lag. This is just absolutely astonishing. If you were to watch my um, you know, broadcast from yesterday, which are now archived, you'd be able to see that some of it was unbelievable. When you were trying to jump, the character was being grounded. When you were trying to fly, you were hitting the rocks. When you were trying to run, you'd be just literally brought back to the, uh, you know, the starting point. You were running away from the enemies and you would come back to the middle of the firefight, etc, etc. So many problems, so many technical difficulties and indeed all of them were EA server based. I'm not sure whether the servers were overloaded and facing outages or whether there were some technical problems emerging due to the sheer volume of the players. I mean, obviously, as you know, the vast majority of players purchased and pre-ordered the game in advance, therefore they were given those keys. But EA were also giving lots of keys through various other forums, people could purchase them, as well as having lots of freebies given to different online magazines. So the volume of gamers was astonishing. I have to say, rarely did I see that many people coming in at the same time. And then secondly, the number of streamers for this VIP demo was also phenomenal. Rarely do you see that many people streaming VIP demos in advance in such huge numbers. And I have to say, to be fair to Bioware, I expected some of it to be accessible prior to Friday, particularly for those people who were pre-ordering and purchasing the Legion of Dawn, considering that the demo was called the VIP demo. Well, in my view, if you are called the user of the VIP demo, you would have to have some degree of privilege in the content, not just in terms of when you are going to be able to access it. So in fact, the demo we are doing at the moment is the same one which everybody is going to be doing next week for free with free access worldwide. And I really wonder what kind of problems the servers are likely to experience then on the second weekend if we were having so many technical difficulties with a limited number of gamers. Assume, obviously assuming that everyone got the code correctly and indeed after the purchase of either Origin Services or one of those Anthem editions. So really considering that the second weekend might have uh, 10 times more players than what we had yesterday, it really makes me wonder whether many second problems can be resolved within such a period of time. I'm mean, certainly hoping that they will be. Coming back to the forums online, the dissatisfaction with the VIP demo was phenomenal. If you access Twitter and if you go to Anthem official Twitter page, you will see that every single comment posted there by Casey Hudson or the Bauer team was met by thousands of different responses and people were really, really unhappy, not just because there were technical problems, but purely to do with the fact that they had to be waiting for more than eight hours plus for certain problems to be resolved. I personally do not understand the ins and outs of the techniques of you know, the game launches and all that is accompanying such promotional campaigns, but evidently the companies will need to test better and perhaps invest more in the use of servers because if you're having that many gamers coming at the same time, they have to be anticipating that the volume, and, you know, the sheer requirement for bandwidth will be under severe stress and additional resources would have to be considered or they should have been brought in at an earlier stage. I don't know how it works but definitely it's a good lesson for Bioware and for EA. The dissatisfaction is quite considerable and I think really from my point of view this is also tragic because Anthem is looking and feeling like an amazing game. You know when you enter the menu screen of the demo which you're watching now it is very very mouth-watering. It is appealing. It wants you to jump in to find out what it's used for and to talk to all of the characters who are seated around that <coughs> elevated section of arena. So basically having all the second problems and people reading online all the dissatisfaction may well be off-putting and may well be causing undue concerns to everyone else who's considering whether to enter the game at a later stage. One way or the other, I think overall I'm very happy with what I've seen in terms of the game content and in terms of the ease of use and the way I could access different sections. Similar to Mass Effect, you have the knowledgeable library section, which is telling in advance everything about every single character and participant. 
I advise everyone who is approaching Anthem Demo to read some of the sections because you will be directed to certain ideas on how the enemies are likely to be behaving once you face them in the wild. And also you'll know a lot more about your friendlies and the world you're existing in. So principally the first thing to do is simply to go through the menu and become familiar with some of the sections and we are going to be looking uh, into that very very shortly. I'll just run through the very basics right at the beginning when we start. Alright so Anthem is a massive open world FPS sci-fi multiplayer game produced by Bioware, the creators of Dragon Age and Mass Effect and it has been obviously entertaining us yesterday through this so-called VIP demo and tonight we are hoping that those technical problems are going to be less present so that we could enjoy the gameplay even more. It is one of the biggest games of the decade, there is a huge anticipation about its release and obviously there are lots of expectations about how the game is going to be performing. Uh, I would also direct you to the IGN world premiere of this demo which was launched on Thursday. If you have a chance, um, access IGN forums through the console or your PC or any other platform and then access or find the section called IGN Anthem World Premiere. It is a broadcast lasting a, roughly about four and a half hours, so you can be watching certain sections which are of interest to you. The reason I'm asking you to watch this particular broadcast and not the abbreviated ones is that this broadcast does have uh, two of the uh, lead producers um, of Anthem and they are telling you lots of different things about the game, about the production and also about the future of the project after its release. There were two things which really caught my ear. First of all, uh, Sila Costa, who is the uh, main producer on Anthem, said that they're very seriously considering introducing crossplay within the first couple of months. So I really, really support that. I really think it is a brilliant idea and it's something that really should be more and more present uh, across the board when it comes to multiplayer games because I've had so many people coming in on Destiny and saying I'm so sorry I can't come in but actually I'm on Xbox or I'm on PC or I'm on PS4 and therefore we can't come into your arena. We really love your broadcast, we would like to team up, but we can't because this is not a cross-platform game. So basically crossplay is going to be introduced on Anthem, this has been confirmed by Sila Costa so we just have to wait and see basically when it is going to be made ready and that's terrific because as you could see Anthem World is vast and after the game is in circulation for about 6 to 12 months because for all the games what you get is multiplayer arena where there aren't many people playing and the reason is not that they are not there but they are doing it on various platforms so perhaps during one particular night you have more people playing from PC than on PlayStation 4 and therefore people on PlayStation 4 are struggling to find their partners for uh, carp co and fire team membership I think with Anthem this is even more important because you are likely to be playing it together with three other characters in a team of four, although you can play it also by yourself. But similar to Destiny, once you are going through the open world, you will stumble on other characters who are perhaps in teams or playing you know, by themselves or in duos. And then you can join very easily uh, some of their quests and you can obviously have them supporting your mission or your current tasks. So it's very very important that crossplay is enabled. I certainly hope that they are going to be doing that very very soon and then obviously during our broadcast we'll be able to get in people from everywhere regardless of what platform they're playing and then on. So the overall verdict after the first night would be Anthem is an amazing looking and sounding game. It is truly jaw-dropping on the audiovisual front, but the launch of the demo was marred by those technical problems. So I told you everything that was there to know about yesterday and why not just simply jump in and indulge in our exploration of this wonderful, mysterious, atmospheric and very, very distant Anthem world. Let's just jump in. Music also is absolutely delightful, very atmospheric and for all of you who watched the Game Awards in November you would have obviously watched the big orchestra playing the score as part of this ceremony. It was equally impressive and so far so good really within the game it just you know, it sounded really terrific similar to Destiny in fact very epic, very massive, very much in tune with this open world 
which we are going to be exploring for many months and years ahead. The trouble yesterday was with loading. I can see that the loading tonight is as lengthy. So <laughs> I'm not bothered really with the fact that I need to wait. But what does concern me once I get into one of the missions, I get this massive lag and then I can't really progress anywhere. And I lost many, many missions in there or attempts to win a mission. All right, we loaded, all right. So that's good because of that massive lag. So, once we get in, as you could see, we are given our welcome message. So, welcome freelancer. Discover what you can experience doing the Anthem demo weekends and how VIP players can bring up to three friends along. Now, suit up freelancer. We'll see you in Fort Tarsis and beyond. Tarsis, I beg your pardon. Uh, I'll see you in Fort Tarsis and beyond. So, you had a very nice welcoming message there from the team indeed we are all looking forward to be in Fort Tarsis we explored Fort Tarsis in depth yesterday and indeed that was the first part of my VIP demo broadcast which was actually flawless there were no hitches in there so if you are interested in exploring Fort Tarsis you can do so without any difficulty you can literally walk around everywhere you can explore every single bit in detail visible on the screen and you will face no obstacles whatsoever. So that is probably the best first thing for you to do if you are doing this demo. Do explore Fort Tarsis completely, familiarize yourself with the environment, with various locations and characters. I have to stress that there are lots of characters there who will not talk to you because they will be unlocked once you are in the main game. So they're not talking to us during the VIP demo testing. That really doesn't matter. You know exactly where they are so once the game comes out. You'll be able to find them with ease, talk to them, get all the goodies, and get relevant information. However, those characters who are talking to us are telling us a lot about themselves, the environment, and the missions. The number of answers or options presented to those characters is perhaps not as great in volume as we had it in Mass Effect. If you remember, in Mass Effect, sometimes we would have up to five or six options when asking a certain question or discussing it. This actually is made simpler. This does not mean that the content is somewhat shorter, which means you will be provided maybe with two or three options, but once you pursue them, you will get crisp answers. You still will have to be talking to all the characters in order to get better knowledge on the game and your, env your environment. So the next message here is controlling your javelin. If you want to find out how to control your javelin, you can click there. I'm not going to do that because then it is going to connect me to the browser and therefore you will get a massive big blue screen and that's not something I want you to be enduring. So when you click on that, you will get your um, browser up and running and then there, there will be instructions on how to do it. In fact, you may even ask um, you may even access this section through your Android devices whilst playing, so that will be very useful. Kind of on your phone and your tablet, and you know, just make sure that you either download it or you have it on your screen, and then you can follow it. The actual controls are quite simple. Uh, the probably most advanced control that you need to figure and master is how to fly in that javelin suit, and that yesterday was made difficult because we had serious problems with that lag. So you would, for instance, try to jump and you jump by pressing your X button just once. And as soon as you press the X button, you need, need to use your L3 and you need to forward it. So as you forward it, you are then flying into a certain direction. And with your R2, you are able to control the direction of the movement. So if you want to be flying up in the air, then you can really basically eject yourself high up and after that you can literally just fly without uh, any difficulty around that area. We faced very many difficulties yesterday initially with the procedure of jumping and ejecting because the lag was not allowing us to do so so we just kept jumping and we we're being brought back to the very beginning to our you know starting point and then later when flying we were literally crashing into rocks and trees and various other objects in there and even when we were to land we would end up at an area which was not desirable so all of that was down to the lag on the service but purely in terms of the controls they were very easy to use and i was quite surprised because i played some other games where you had to be flying characters and this was really made very very easy and very accessible for everyone 
obviously we are all focused on the very best top tier edition of anthem and this top tier edition is called legion of dawn and if you purchase it you will get all kinds of extras on it and one of the guess priceless elements in there is your founder member emblem and this founder member emblem will be there with you and will be on display indicating that you pre-ordered and you were with this anthem world literally from the word go as obviously we are uh, right now by playing this vip demo so it's very important that you actually access vip demo and also purchase and pre-order and if you do so you will get this banner which will stay with you and everybody who is going to be contesting you in the arena will realize that you're one of those hardcore anthem truly dedicated first day veterans right from the beginning so that is wonderful for everyone who is interested in being one of those guys i'll tell you as to why i want to be one of those and i never had that kind of ambition or quest in the past but thanks to my destiny community veterans who were telling me about the beta testing days and the fact they were there from the word go and the you know literally tried it when the game was released or when it had to be testing the uh, initial section of the game and i thought well that's wonderful and no wonder that four years later they have all this knowledge skill and experience and i thought my goodness it would it not be wonderful if i had exactly the same two or three years later so why not do that with anthem rather than destiny because with destiny guess what i was a bit late <laughs> and with anthem i'm a few steps ahead so that is basically my focus maybe for anthem and some other fantastic big blockbusters to come out of our video gaming industry in the future and anthem seems to be probably the most appropriate because it's very similar to destiny and indeed much closer to my favorite game of all times which is mass effect trilogy and also produced by my favorite developer bioware i've been with bioware literally from the word go played all of the games since the initiation and i have to say the rpg uh, technique which they developed is certainly second to none and probably one of the best ever created um, in this industry so therefore for anyone who's not familiar just familiar you know engage yourselves with dragon age with mass effect trilogy with neverwinter with jade empire all the other fantastic games which bioware were producing and working on over the years and you will get the flavor of how good that is and the last thing here which we have is thank you so this is obviously the message we want to be receiving as we have purchased the um, anthem game in advance pre-ordered acquired the vip demo and this thank you says we hope that you will enjoy the anthem demo weekends and we look forward to seeing you again for the worldwide launch on february the 22nd indeed looming on horizon in about four weeks and just coming back to the demo there's actually a few things i did not say the vip demo the idea was kind of uh, first time before everyone access so vip does not mean that the content you are uh, playing during this weekend is somewhat different to the other which is going to be launched a week later the content allegedly from what we heard from everyone is going to be exactly the same the only difference is that as a vip member because you pre-ordered or you purchased one of those codes or you purchased the ea origins uh, is then going to be allowing you to be trying it before anyone else and i personally also mis misunderstood the original marketing uh, statement which i guess like everyone else would assume that vip means you're having something which is different to others and principally considering there were so many technical difficulties there may be some difference eventually i don't really know and lots of people yesterday on twitter were asking bioware to be extending quite considerably sizably the period for demo testing because you know what i also forgot to tell you this demo is not short it does contain up to eight hours of actual story-based gameplay that does not include your exploration of the open world so you can be literally playing this game for about 20 30 hours uh, just on a demo which is really absolutely astonishing and i think the volume the sheer size of the demo is something which is likely to be causing some technical problems as well but as i said the gamers are asking for extension they want people to be allowed to be doing it for more than three days because guess what on the first day we had absolutely no proper gameplay at all at all that does not mean that every single region of the world was affected in the same fashion but i can only speak for myself i'm obviously in london uk and our servers here had not worked at all and i spent yesterday i'll tell you six hours on anthem 
in the actual gameplay, whilst previously I spent eight hours trying to get the demo to work. So it's 14 hours in one day spent on um, everything Anthem related, but eight hours were actually spent on simply trying to get this demo to work, which eventually was resolved, but obviously with a lot of difficulty. Anyway, let's not focus on all the technical difficulties, because obviously they are to be expected with some of these massive, massive big games. And I just have to say that I was a bit staggered by the sheer quantity of them. I didn't expect them to be that many. I didn't expect them to be persisting and literally throughout and causing many, many problems for, well, gamers and obviously even many more for those who are doing the same thing as myself, which is obviously doing Twitch streams. So we've seen all of that. These are the messages we uh, are given right at the beginning. And now we are in the area of Fort Tarsis, right? We do have investigate the relics effects on Matthias, which is a mission that I was not able to complete yesterday due to lag. But what I want to show you before we do anything is obviously this is the first area which you are going to be facing on this demo. So basically you will see your hands and then you'll start walking. Matthias is here but he is not going to be speaking to you because he actually also is located in another area. Uh, the first section of the demo was asking us uh, to bring in a relic from you know, one of the planets and that relic was required for Matthias to be building a new javelin suit. So once that relic was used, Matthias was multiplied into threes and all three Matthiases were actually having a different soul. There were three different characters. Matthias was perturbed by that, and then he ordered me, I should say my character, to go investigate as to why this was happening, why this relic was having that kind of effect on him. And also he wanted to find out whether the other two characters were real or imaginary, although we could all see them and indeed experience them in full. So let's have a look. We have here this area. You've seen it yesterday. If you watch my uh, presentation, there is an item which you have to pick up here, right at the beginning, and this item gives you all the options, right? So I picked it up yesterday, and we'll have, uh, we're gonna have a very, very good close look at these options now. So you click on that. Basically, if you are playing it on PlayStation, like myself, you click on options, and once you click on option, you get everything in there, which is very, very important to analyze. Okay, so you get critical objectives. Basically, the first section you get is your journal, right? So you click on critical objectives here, and have inverse functions. Inverse functions is the um, mission which we are currently pursuing. As you could see, it is still left open. The uh, kind of uh, golden triangle there sign is up and running, which means we are still to be completing it. And the mission is telling us the manifold, that's the relic I picked up, has split Matthias into three. The trio doesn't quite understand how and why this has happened, and they need to learn all they can about the manifold and the consequences of this divide. So the manifold was the piece, and we are now being told to go into the open uh, open world and basically investigate the relics, uh, you know, relics' effect on Matthias. And once we complete, we will get all the pistol, heavy weapons, sniper and rifle, different kinds of weapons. And I have to say the um, area we went is massive. So many, many corners in there to explore, lots of enemies and lots of hostile animals and creatures for us to neutralize. So really a lot of fun. It's not like you're going to be walking and encountering nothing, you know, it's just all the time something is going on. And what's beautiful is that you can be pursuing this game in separate directions. It means you can be walking and flying, you can be exploring every single bit in the open world, but also you can be pursuing your quest. And if you're not doing a quest, I think there are lots of different activities in there, similar to what in Destiny is called adventures, Destiny 2 that is, and you can just pick them up as you go along and they will automatically register. So as you can see, completed quests. I have one completed quest, and that was the triple threat. And basically, uh, triple threat was the quest where I went to uh, another planet and I uh, basically had to look for manifold the manifold which then caused the Matthias to triple so the Acanius Matthias Sumner is on the hunt for a relic he calls the manifold which may be useful in building the powerful javelin of dawn and then the outcome of the mission was quite simple the manifold was retrieved which means I completed that quest so for all the missions that you want to be pursuing critical objectives are basically telling you exactly where you are secondly you have strongholds right strongholds there are some areas in there I think my understanding from what Sila Costa the game producer said 
was that strongholds are similar to the raids in Destiny. Correct me if I'm mistaken, if you already played it, but I think this was my understanding and getting to the stronghold uh, was difficult because they were well fortified and obviously we had to face lots of enemies and preferably we would have to be launching attacks with our friends and team members. So, as you can see, Tyrant Mine is one of those. Scars are our enemies and they're making acid weapons to attack supply caravans. Corvus now knows where the weapons are being made and they need you to shut the operation down. So principally, once we are going to be attacking the stronghold, we will have to destroy the enemy, the facility, in order to enable, obviously, us to carry on. And you can see, after you shut down Scar Weapon Operation, then you'll get some weapons and we can see two rifles and perhaps some unique gear. We don't know what the unique gear is. The game will tell us as we progress that. And then we have feats and on feats, we've got general feats and then you have here basically your stats mission complete in progress you can see complete the mission on easy difficulty is there reinforcement in progress awarded for reinforcing other freelancers and missions world events in progress awarded for successfully completing world events in free play so world events are similar to the um, events which we had in destiny as well and so I in terms of the gameplay, there is a similarity, you know, the, the concept is similar, but on the other hand, the game feels completely different. How do I put it? You have a concept which is the same or very, very similar, and then you come to the world which gives you a completely different flavor. The world just feels different, and the way you behave in this world is inherently different because you have many other options but just to use your FPS, and this is where the value of Anthem is going to be obviously progressing. So that's basically on the general features, and then you have a tinier. So you have weak point striker, weapon master, lead slayer, have uh, carry features. So that would be gear master, combos, multi kills, uh, goons, and then Ivania. So basically, you have various bits in here telling you what achievements you are basically acquiring experience points, weapons, and you know, completion of various quests. Many, many of those are there. I think all of you who played Bioware games from before, particularly Mass Effect 2 and 3, you will know how many quests and sub-quests were there. Very, very many. In fact, during the Mass Effect 2, somebody said there was literally an infinite number of game resolutions. I think that was taking it a bit too far. We do have a certain number, which obviously will be transpiring depending on our options and choices uh, made during the gameplay. But the numbers were staggering, you know, compared to all the other games. And therefore, Bioware does have this aura of the uh, game developer that is capable of producing those games, which even if they were not a multiplayer, like Mass Effect 2, can be played for many, many years with all those open world resolutions and developments. And that is incredible. Neverwinter was done that as well, you know. I think everyone who's interested, although Neverwinter 9 is not done by Bioware, uh, I don't think, and uh, different companies and all, but still, I would recommend everyone to enter Neverwinter on PC and try it because Neverwinter is similar to Oblivion, but at the same time does have the Mass Effect concept. So really, really interesting and really enjoyable. And in addition to that, very humorous. Lots of characters with a lot to say, which will make you laugh. So that is something which I really appreciated with Bioware from the word go. Okay, so these are our journal objectives. As you could see, very easy to find. You just click on options and everything is there. So anytime you're thinking, well, how far did I get? What is my current option? What is currently going on? You simply go to the uh, journal section and then uh, access whatever you want to explore. Okay, so the next thing is challenges. So challenges are, as you could see, path to glory, trials, complete the challenges. So it will tell us what challenges I completed and challenges are basically well the way I experienced them yesterday uh, connected to our firefights and sometimes they're connected to the collection of certain items which you harvest or various other things which you will uh, find as you go along through your mission and it's interesting because in here we have like forge ride trial of Ivania and uh, award by gathering crafting materials so you could see if you were collecting crafting materials diligently and in, indeed there were like nine different items which I had to pick up then uh, you would be rewarded with five, five coins and I guess with collection of the money you are going to be able to go to various stores and then purchase uh, different types of items 
from from them be it uh, weapons or anything else i don't know exactly i've not gone this far but obviously uh, when you are completing challenges you are being rewarded with money and the money is going to be used at some point in the game so healer trial of ivania you've got in here awarded for repairing dant ally javelins so indeed i had helped three of my colleagues in there and therefore i was rewarded with five coin also i remember destroying that massive turret and i also got some coins there as well munitions trial of Carif. Uh, and awarded for defeating enemies with gear. So 30 of those were defeated. Part of glory bronze, daily trials, four to four, complete part, you know, so obviously complete part of glory trials before time runs out. I completed that successfully. Sharpshooter trial of Artinia awarded for defeating enemies by hitting their weak points. So it means I have been able to do that. So that worked well. And weapons trial of Artinia awarded for defeating enemies with weapons. In actual fact, I have to say that when we didn't have much lag yesterday, the aiming was very, very good. You could really aim precisely and you can hit your, your enemies exactly where you wanted to. So that really was very, very advanced. In fact, I played the, uh, what was it, the free trial of Call of Duty, um, Black Ops 4 the other day, and I was literally... Um, surprised with how imprecise the weapon was and how quickly certain shots registered as four hits. This is not going to be the case here. The weaponry has got very sophisticated precise system of aiming the enemy's hit. So your challenges and the scores will be very much dependent on that as well, which I think is very, very good. So these are the challenges, as you can see, which I completed. And you have trials in there as well, let's see lots of different trials yeah so path to glory silver trial of tarsis elite trial of actinia i'm quite curious to see what i will be getting once the trials are completed it's very likely that there will be money or maybe some items granted and all of those are basically automated so when you are completing certain item collection or when you do harvesting all of those are going to be then automatically completed and you'll get a pop-up message on the screen telling you exactly what completion was for and also what you acquired. So it's very easy to use, very good, you know, really a lot of time spent on this and similar to Mass Effect, literally you, you can be completing them with great deal of satisfaction through obviously your own entertainment as well. Uh, and Stronghold. So obviously if you are completing those stronghold attacks you will become your stronghold master and therefore you will get some rewards in here for the first one we'll get fire inscription ice inscription lightning inscription acid inscription so we need to successfully complete stronghold expeditions in order to do that principally we are not doing that as yet because yesterday's technical problems which produced massive lag were preventing us from even finishing a single mission Gear. So gear is applicable to a separate character which you are like to be playing here in Anthem. There are four characters you can choose to play. Four different javelin suits. Colossus, Interceptor, Ranger and Storm. So at the moment the game has given us automatically the Ranger. So I am one of the Rangers and as you can see I'm being given here various um, sections and each one of those is also automated so when I'm doing certain kills when I'm using certain weapons they will be automatically registered and therefore I'll be given awards and we're not going to bother now with Storm and the others but each one of them does have different types of abilities and depending on those abilities we are collecting our scores as you could see lightning coil shield pulse heavy rocket so let's compare that with uh, ranger seeking missile frag grenade spark beam so different weapons you know and different abilities per character okay weapons in here we have a great number of weapons and we could see that the use of those weapons is also going to be tracked so the um, successful use of certain weapons will be detected and therefore we are going to be rewarded for their use. As you could see I was using my soul trifle um, quite a bit. The soul trifle is the weapon which is given by default. I'm not chosen it but it's been given to me right from the beginning and so far so good enjoying a lot of success so I'm very very happy obviously with everything achieved. Grenade launcher I've been also using but it didn't register for some reason and uh, 
you know, I was using a lot of uh, auto cannon, grenade launcher, and assault rifle yesterday. And uh, let's see, complete the challenges. What it says: complete the challenges, defender. Okay, so defeat enemies using defender. It means that I had completed that by killing 50 enemies. I personally do not remember it, but the game tells me indeed I had completed it. So that's probably the result. That's the, that's the score. Combat ultimate master. Well, defeat enemies using a javelin's ultimate ability. You will see that ultimate ability is available in there. I now forget how I get to use it, but I think it's by pressing one of those um, direction buttons on the left side of your uh, controller on PS4. But we'll get back to that later on, so don't have to focus on it. Combo Master, trigger combo um, reactions during combat, and Melee Master is also defeating enemies by using melee combat. So everything that you do is going to be as you can see. Oh no, 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 we don't want to leave yet. Everything is going to be registered and, you know, the game is going to be telling you as you go along with whatever you collected. Many, many of those are to be completed, so beware. It's not simple and if you are one of those people who likes collecting scores, you are in for a long, long, long period of gameplay. Library is the section similar to what we had in Mass Effect 2 and like I said to you earlier, Library is basically giving us a wealth of knowledge on everything in our Anthem world. So that includes society, environment, geography, history, technology. So I was reading several things here yesterday in order to introduce people to our friends and enemies. And principally in here, what's important to recognize is that freelancers are obviously us. And we have Akanis who are friends. We have Scars who are enemies. So we'll very quickly have a look at that and we'll see that freelancers basically are uh, independent lancers across the follow General Tarsis and the path of valor. They silence cataclysms and aid those in need beyond the safety of the walls. So valor is to starve people regardless of the station, courage to bring silence when the anthem sings, faith to keep my word and the word of my brethren, trust that the free answer when called and then this strong align stronger together should be our banner you know strong align stronger together is the banner of the freelancers so remember we are one of those guys we are playing freelancers dominion the expansionist military regime from Straline that destroyed the city of Freemark when they attempted to control the cenotaph. While the technological advances are noteworthy, the methods have shown little regard for life or individuality. So remember, the Dominion are really our mortal enemies. This is like a military regime full of tyrants and they have absolutely no respect for human life. So watch out when we meet Dominion, we need to destroy them. Okay, Nist. Our scientists, researchers and scholars who study the mysteries of the world from wildlife to shaper instruments. While some are found teaching in classrooms, others spend their lives solving shaper mysteries in the wilderness. Right? So remember, uh, these characters are our friends. They have long preserved the collected knowledge of humanity and consider their studies a spiritual and moral duty. Right? So we are going to be talking to them. They are basically our friends. Scars are our enemies. So we have two different types of scars, Escari and scars. Escari is a sentient manifestation of scar swarm. Once a swarm has reached a critical mass through consumption, it can spawn an Escari, an advanced scar capable of speech and intelligent thought. So that's the Escari we are analyzing in here. Compared to regular scars, Escari individuals with unique thoughts and ambitions that are thought to lead the scar power struggles. So that is from History of Scars. So Escari is one uh, enemy and Scars are the other. Escaris are somewhat more advanced than the others. A colonial swarm of insects that mimics that dominant life... I should read that again. That mimics the dominant life form in an area. Scars first appear from a cataclysm in 413 LV. At the time, freelancers defeated a large vicious creature none of them recognized 
Later, unknown to freelancers, the scores regrouped and changed their mimicry to appear human. So they're very, very deadly enemies. I remember, well, scars are divided into Escari and scars, and whenever we meet them, we really have to con contest them with brute force. Cyphers. Cyphers are friends. Cyphers are individuals with a sensitivity to the anthem of creation and are capable of telepathic communication and heightened mental calculation. Many young people who are identified as having this unique gift undergo amber exposure and dedicated training to enhance their mental skills. When Cypher skills uh, abilities first appeared, Corvus sought to use the, these individuals to covert purposes. They developed amplifier technology and created a type of institutional training center called a Satomi. The most important advance of these is Esterat, the premier Satomi located in Antium. So Cyphers are friends. Owen Corley we already talked to, we met him. Owen is a Cypher who works out of the freelancer enclave in Fort Tarsus, a small town on the frontier of Bastion. Born into poverty, he was sent into cipher training at a young age when he first showed sensitivity to the anthem. Owen spent most of his life studying at the Bronnelin Satomi in Hyloist. So, he is an adventurer and mischief maker at heart. And after leaving Bronnelin, he travelled for a number of years before setting, setting down in Fort Tarsus to work with the freelancers. Okay, so we have seen now who our friends are, remember? Freelancers are obviously ourselves, Achaeanists and Cyphers are friends, Dominion and Scars are enemies. So for every single detail in here, right? Environment, you have fauna, flora, resources, hazards. You know, you can just answer every single question here. And I really advise every single Anthem player, not maybe to read everything at the beginning, but when you are facing a certain challenge or threat in the environment, or when you're coming to a new location, always always resort back to your knowledge in the library and read something which is connected to that part of the game it will make your gameplay a lot easier and more entertaining and you will be in possession of the knowledge which is going to help you to defeat the enemy so remember that the defeating of the enemy sometimes is obviously linked to the knowledge you have of them and it will be based on certain methods for which you can eliminate them I've gone too far with this as well. So these are challenges. The, this was our library, as you could see. Well, it's interesting to see histories because in histories you have Anthem of Creation and there's history of Cataclysms, Echoes, the Anthem of Creation, the Heart of Rage. We've not really read any of that yesterday. We just focused on the you know, friends and foes in order to proceed with the game. And this is what we're going to do today. So if we are to be facing certain challenges or we come to some strange areas, we are going to go back to the library and we'll get further knowledge of those as well. No need to be spending you know, several hours just reading those at the beginning. And then we have tutorials. So tutorials are particularly useful if you are trying to learn how to do certain things. So you have first of all tutorial on how to play, then how to build your javelin, then on expeditions and growing your legend. And each one of those will have lots of lots of different hints. So you could see Colossus hints, combination of effects, health and damage. So all of these can be learned from tutorials. But you know what? I kind of like trying it out and then finding out for myself in the game. And if it's very difficult, then obviously I'll go back to the tutorial and find out uh, maybe more expressly and more precisely about what I need to do. But generally, obviously, it's greater fun just exploring the game. So these are all the sections which we have on our options. Remember, Journal, Challenges, Library, Tutorials, each one of those is instantly accessible at any time by pressing your Option button. If you want to be tracking certain objectives, then you can simply um, use your square button. So what we are going to do is we are going to be tracking this inverse functions, right? You can see that? And it's already tracked, so I don't have to do that. And it's automated, I think, this section when you are pursuing one domain quest. But you can be tracking, I think, subquests as well, which is useful if you're collecting certain kit items and gear. And um, you know, you can combine the two really ones which are tracked manually with those that come up as tracked by default. Right, so coming back to it, you have critical objectives, strongholds, and feats. Uh, and you have uh, journal challenges library and tutorials for you to find at any given time you are just to click your options button and this is then up and running and in order to move those you are going to be using l1 and l uh, 
uh, R1 button. So as you could see, I'm just swinging them from left to right by the use of these buttons. Very nice and easy, very accessible. And also the descriptions are not as lengthy as they were in Mass Effect. I sometimes in Mass Effect, um, after reading the library, felt a bit overloaded with information. But indeed, the information from there helped me to understand the mind of the enemy. And that was also then critical in me pursuing certain strategies on how I was to be defeating them. And I think in this game, this is like to be much more heightened because this is a, um, you know, uh, first of all, this is a brand new game and technologically and in terms of its concept is a lot more advanced than Mass Effect. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on this and then exploring and finding out how this is going to work in practice once we hit the gameplay. So these are the options. First of all, we have explored everything here yesterday. I will just show you a bit uh, for you to see. We have this beautiful Middle Eastern styled uh, section, which looks a bit like a tent, but it's actually underground. It's in a basement. We have those characters in here, but you can see, for instance, this, some visitors in today. this gentleman to here, Tarsus, and also the Rina. lady in here. They cannot talk to us at the moment. Three Matthias Sumners. Give me strength. Three Matthias Sumners. She already has heard about it. So let's say you want to talk to her. You just click on talk. But many characters are not accessible to us in the demo. And of course, the content is going to be available in the full game. The reason for that is very simple. Uh, all these characters are giving us subquests and various subtasks. And the demo is focused on obviously us experiencing the major missions in order to get the flavor of the game. So that is the main reason. I haven't been over blocked. to the Helios in a long while. <laughs> Don't miss the smoke, but it is a good place. What actually happened to the fort's governor? I haven't gotten a straight answer from anyone. So they're asking lots of questions. When you're traveling, then they are going to be asking lots of questions. And it's possible that sometimes if you engage them, they'll provide you some extra clues, but we'll have to see how this develops. So this is the environment where we literally start out. You've got two different ways out here through the um, back stairs, or you can go here the other way to your right, where you are going to be entering uh, the bazaar area. And then you walk through bazaar area to the uh, section where you get into your javelin suit. OK, so he is a very, very important character in the game. I know My this philosophy I've is pretty simple. If you can grill it, it's not worth your trouble. A man's stomach needs standards. I know that because I've watched all the uh, developer documentaries and he very prominently featured there as one of the lead developers of Javelin Suits. So I'm quite curious to see what he is going to be doing in the game. But at the moment, I can't talk to him because the demo is not allowing us to do that. As you can see, these guys are doing some maintenance works. And in fact, let's say if we were to go out here, we go out here and you'll see there are lots of people out there, soldiers and civvies alike, beautifully designed, all of them. Look at this. The atmosphere in here is terrifically, really beautifully designed. And see at the cortex, it's not allowing me to do that. But otherwise, in the real game, the full game, you come here and you pick it up. It is a clue. In here, you could see there's some, something written on this paper, and I'm quite certain it is going to be giving us some sub quest, something we can explore. Really awesome. So, when we come to the main area, you can see lots of people out there. So, I really love that. Look at this. It's a beautiful design. I'll take a screenshot of that because we are doing this stroll today in plain sunshine. Yesterday, uh, lots of my missions were happening at night. So, Really beautiful design. Look at that. It's wonderful. Look at that. They're cooking something and their coffees and teas are there. Really beautiful. Very leisurely atmosphere. Ideal for strolling and exploring. And every character in there is beautifully designed, as you can see. So if you look at this lady, you can see what she's wearing. This gentleman as well. A lot of time spent on detail everywhere. So, we are now going to be going to the central section where our javelin suit can be donned. So that's this massive bazaar. We have some characters guarding the gates and I wonder who these are. He looks 
very similar to some of our friends from Destiny. Almost as if he was imported. And the other one as well. But I personally do not know as to why they're there. This is the re-entrance when you want to speak to Matthias down there. Oh, so just remember this is a shortcut There's and the other is a longer route. Again. If you want to make a shortcut you go Maybe through the uh, steps taking directly to the basement section. Okay. It's beautiful marketplace in here. People are all happy and entertained. We'll take another screenshot in here. All the screenshots we are going to be having on our Twitter and Instagram so watch this space for those after being posted so you have vanity store in here and when you come closer to the section with javelin suits you have this maintenance person she's called I think Zoe and then you also have this section and this is your armory called Vault. Right, so when we click here, heavy pistols, you know, you can see, and shotguns. I'm not exactly sure how this works as yet, I've not used it. Marksman rifles, machine pistols, light machine guns, sniper rifles, so various, various weapons. And then you can have components, two basics. Okay. I'm not sure whether okay so we have taken that out so, so this does work I thought it was actually working just in the full game Ranger five items Bulwark point frag grenade frag grenades and so I guess this is our inventory of some sort and then in here we probably can be dismantling the weapons and getting some kit for it as well consumables are not accessible crafting you see I will have to learn how to use this I've not tried it but this is all in the vault okay so all of that is here and these are the items which I collected during my battles okay we'll go further up and you can see there is the central section which is elevated our javelin suit is in there we are going to be able to come in there and use it very shortly and this is Zoe I think the enclave has seen better days hasn't it there's more crits than people down there I think so she will talk to us quite a bit we can engage with her as well take a snapshot of her but I just discovered there is something here called Forge. Right? So let's see, Forge. You begin the demo as a level 10 freelancer. Your first javelin, the Ranger, is balanced between offense and defense. Keep playing to unlock an additional javelin. Okay. So this is basically our loadout, right? And in here, I've not used it yesterday, so it's basically a first for me as well. We can, let's see. Oh, I see, we just can move this around, okay. And in here, we have loadout and we have appearance. Now here's where it gets fun. Time to make a statement. So this is my appearance tutorial. I'm not done yesterday, so we are going to do this as our first task today. So let's just have a very, very short break before we commence. And we are going to be, well, you know, we are going to be doing this. So this is going to be our first task of today. We have a short break now. We've gone to the first section of our tutorial, an introduction to the VIP demo. We've not done any actions yet, but action is to follow. So be ready for all the action and all the interesting bits, which are going to come your way literally within a few moments. A very, very short two minute break, and then we will continue with our appearance.
Right, my dear friends, I'm back, slightly refreshed, and we are going to be continuing with our Anthem VIP demo testing. We are going to do something today that I've not tried yesterday. So that's really exciting. It's basically looking at our loadout and appearance. So first of all, we look at the appearance. It tells us upgrade the appearance of your javelin by changing colors, animations, and materials. Experiment with wear, vinyls, and metal plating to change the javelin you want. Use coin or shards to purchase new appearance items. Okay. So let's see helmet. That's the helmet we've got. Unlock. We can unlock appearances and materials. Some may be purchased at the store or forge, while others can only be unlocked through challenges. Items that you have unlocked and displayed at the appearance section of the forge. You can unlock appearances, item uh, appearance items by paying for them with coin or shards. Okay. So twenty-five relic torso. Okay, twenty-nine. We have hundred and twenty-five at the moment. So we'll buy this one, looks very good, right? And relic torso. Relic torso, okay. I see. So now from the unlocked, it has come from the section fast to unlock. It's gone back into the main section, which is equipped. So we can see Relic Torso is the one we do not have. So we'll put it on. Well, no, we already have got it equipped. I see. So it's the Relic Torso, which we have on us. Okay. So it's this central section on our torso, so that's pretty good. Okay, and then that is what? Well, this is a default torso, I see. Try. We're just testing it. So you can see this is the default also, the one which is currently put on my character. And this one is the more advanced relic torso, which is rare. Automatically changes when you switch, when you swing from one to another, you don't have to be enabling it. So that's pretty good as well because it's very easy because as you know in some of the games you have to be literally accepting the new kit but in this instance whatever is highlighted is basically your preference so that's default also and this one is your so that's selected okay so we've seen chest The helmet. Default helmet, which we've got. Okay, we've seen. Wait a minute. Did we have anything on helmet which could be also for unlocking? No. There's nothing. Nothing uh, in that section, therefore, we can't unlock it. Chest we've seen. Vinyls, let's see vinyls. So we have several in here. Equip. This is new. Dirty. Old. Clean. And standard. We'll take clean. I 
as you could see they are I need to put my character up see them being changed down there okay so we'll enable that so that's enabled using that clean one and then we have where state okay old clean well then you will put clean so where were they I couldn't see them basically let's see okay see now and then where state take clean one as well okay changing the appearance a bit animations what are the animations oh I see so that's new dirty clean what's the difference between clean and new not really take everything clean paint change colors okay so that might be interesting primary hard painted old Secondary hard. I think I like that better. Yeah, that's better. Metal bear. So you can just literally have variants of color, you know. Uh, so that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, for you know anyone who kind of loves graphic design and you can try out different things on your character, this is definitely the way to do it. Quite good, isn't it? Yeah, take that one. Metal hardened. That's quite good. Coin, tactical camouflage, that's pretty good. Tactical camouflage, it's been moved to the other section, I think. To equip, so you can equip. Yeah, that's right. So 
so we have tactical cam as we call it camming up it's pretty good Necessary. I see you can use also zoom in and zoom out on your character so that's quite good you can see it better than I think that's probably better isn't it is that green or yeah let's keep that Perforated dots. No, it's not need for that. We keep that on. Okay. So that is basically our paint, as you could see. Our legs change appearance. Default legs are there. Relics legs, okay. I think these are going to be better. They just look better. Equip relics legs. So that's default. And then this would be relic legs, right? are better I think than you think yep they're fortifying our shoulder shoulder area look like shoulder pads a bit put on and then we'll have a look at our chest already we established that okay so we've done it 
we have got our character sorted and I am perfectly beautifulized in here. We'll just have a closer look. As you could see, this is our helmet. I'm a bit small, aren't I? Okay, we'll look at it. So our helmet is our arms, our legs. So you could see. So I'm literally squared away, I'm ready for combat. Javelin suits looking good. I have to say that the suits look a bit scary. When donned, you know, you look like really a very, very mighty warrior. And I guess that's the, uh, you know, that that is the way it needs to be. You need to scare off your enemies. You need to run away from you when you see it. So that's probably what it is. Being completely scary, warrior-like, cammed up in full, as you could see, with our new kit, some of which we purchased. Load out. Let's so. get you ready to go. So we need to see what components we've got. Components, nothing equipped. Okay, support gear, nothing equipped. So we should be able to equip that. No, nothing to unlock. Uncommon support gear, deploys a spherical shield that blocks projectiles over the range of position. Okay. So this is a spherical shield that blocks projectiles of the range's position. 2% javelin acid resistance, 5% shield. Okay, so we've got that equipped. So support gear is bulwark point. We can't get anything there. Assault launcher, seeking missile, power 10. Okay. So Seeking Missile has been equipped, we've been using it quite a lot and that is basically a missile, the, the um, Common Assault Launcher launches a missile that tracks towards target impact combination. So that's pretty good, worked very well yesterday when trying it. Weapons, we have Defender, Common Assault Rifle and Empty. Okay, so that's equipped. We can't change it. Wait a minute. Is something locked in there? No. No. Grenade. Frag. So frag grenade is enabled. Throwing grenade that explodes in large area. Impact combo. And that's about it. So we can zoom in. Zoom out. So I have what? Just examining my kit, the way I look. So what we're going to do is we are going to be taking a nice screenshot of this. Front. And we'll take another one like that. So that everyone can see what we are doing. Oh no, that's not it. Okay. Very good. And we are ready now to engage with our missions. That's it, that's our loadout. So principally we have to remember that any time we want to be examining... Turn around without tripping over something. When, when we want to be examining our loadout and our appearance, we have to come here and then we'll do forge. And then we are going to be able to Have you that. met Commander Vool yet? He was just here. 
I no. can't tell if he's angry or if his face is stuck that way. No, madam, I have not met the commander, but he certainly is very angry because I have not completed my expedition as yet. So I better hurry. Farewell. I shall see you at a later stage. There we are. In fact, what we are going to do when is this. When I first this. came here, there were banners hanging in the enclave. I wonder when they all came down. So what we're going to do is we are going to have a nice lengthy walk from here. And then we are going to be taking a clip. So watch this. You can't go it alone. What else can I do? Have you met Commander Vul yet? He was just here. I can't tell if he's angry or if his face is stuck that way. There we are my friends, what I've done is I've basically taken a clip which I will post on Instagram and on my Twitter which is basically telling everyone what to do when they get to this area and then how they can get into their javelin suit. So it's nice and straightforward and indeed it is going to be providing all of our followers with a very good introduction on what they can do when they want to launch a mission. So we have inverse functions in here. Investigate the relics effects on Matthias. And that is the mission, it's public expedition. So what we're going to do is we'll do exactly the same to what we've done yesterday. And that is first of all to explore the area a bit and then pursue the, um, pursue the, um, the mission. I just want to see. So if I am clicking it here, so we can invite other people to join us up to four. Yeah, so we'll see empty invite player, friends. Well, as you could see, we have lots of our PlayStation friends here playing the mission. We have Mark Psycho, Elias and Mormon and um, Baby Soul, Ben Thero, Sea Crusher, Kari Q, Shitadella, Kailau, Davin J, Game Card, John Bella, Lion 10, Man Bucket, Ole Cliff, Raiden Jax, 6D, S, Sean. Well, you will remember S and Sean, they played quite a few missions with me on Destiny, Space Age. Squashy Ninja, Tank Destroyer, Tyrom, Alcon, Angelina, Artyom, Christopher, and the list goes on. So many friends are there. Well, I can see that my friend uh, Matthias from the US is also there, so that's awesome. Rafa is there, Sekapupu, Volvo. Sen, Alex, Berta, everyone's there. That's terrific. And so many people are there. And we're not going to be inviting anyone at the moment. But we are then obviously able to select favorites and then those who are recommended. So you could see it's very, very easy when you're embarking on a mission. 
you do not have to be just leaving it to the game to decide but you principally can simply invite one of your current friends or people who have done already some fighting missions together with you they join and then you crack on very easy very easy and very good and then in here consumables we have consumable consumables give you a boost during one expedition and are consumed at the end of it consumables are also consumed if you join another expedition from your current one so they're very similar to the consumables in destiny they will basically boost your abilities or they'll enhance your weapon or they'll give greater strength uh, greater velocity or power to your ammunition depending on whatever you select so you could see slot one slot two so that's all something for us to explore later. But presently what we want to do is we are going to be doing inverse functions. So we need to be investigating the relics, its effects and the fires. The difficulty will be easy and we are now going to start the expedition. We now pray to God that all the tech problems from yesterday have been resolved, that the loading is going to be fast and there will be no lag. So let's pray and let's crack on. First mission for tonight is going to be inverse functions where we need to investigate the relics, its effects on the fires. Yeah, it's loading faster than yesterday, so that's very good. Good signs already. Is everyone ready for a big Anthem adventure? In fact, it was the only adventure we were to run yesterday. And we were not able to complete it. So let's see whether we are going to do that tonight. We had no problem in loading the game to start with, so that was good. And let's see whether the mission is going to be loading appropriately as well. Taking its time. And when it comes to the end, it gets very slow, as you can see, and then retreating. There we are, almost there. Almost there, but then retreating. Well, that's that's disappointing. No, the problem's not resolved. It's identical to what we had yesterday. Well, that's disappointing. not going anywhere.
unfortunately we are not getting anywhere with it and when it loads I have to restart the uh, the stream as well which is incredibly annoying there's nothing I can do to the same problem is persisting and I have to be again doing the same thing that I was doing yesterday, which is discontinuing my stream. I hate this, and then restarting it. I have no other choice. I apologize for this, but you could see. Although EA reported that all the problems with the PlayStation had been resolved, this is very, very far from the truth. The problems are absolutely here. It's infinite loading yet again. Right, I have to discontinue my stream and then I'll come back literally within one minute and try to load the mission. So please stay with me on the channel and I'll be, I'll be coming back literally instantly. <laughs> 